the first chlorine displaces this hydrogen here to form the chlorine at the top, while the remaining chlorine reacts with the hydrogen displaced. This is referred to as hair voha zelistic reaction. Welcome to Chemistry Class with Flash Isaac. Today, I'll be taking you through Unibend Chemistry post UTME questions and answers. I already released part 1 where I solved a lot of questions and explained a lot of things in chemistry. I'll share a link to that below. So this is the part 2. Let's continue the journey. The entropy and enthalpy of a system are measure of dash. In systems, we have uh, enthalpy and we have entropy. Entropy is the degree of disorderliness. So this entropy is the degree of disorderliness, randomness, ragagaganess of a system. Meanwhile, enthalpy is the heat change of a system. So from the option, since entropy comes first, we we'll look for the one that has degree of disorderliness first and enthalpy, which is heat content, respectively. So the option is A. The pressure of 100 cm cube of oxygen at 35 degrees Celsius is 750 millimeter mercury. What will be the volume of the gas? If pressure is reduced to 100 millimeter mercury without changing the temperature. Look at it. Temperature is constant. So the relationship between a volume and pressure when temperature is constant is simply Boyle's law, which states that the pressure of a fist or given mass of gas is inversely proportional to its volume provided the temperature remains constant. This means that the pressure is inversely proportional to its volume. Similarly, a volume is inversely proportional to pressure. And changing proportionality to equality sign, this implies that pressure is equals constant over V, where the constant is could be temperature. Cross multiplying this, PV is equals K. And from the given question, they say the pressure of 100 cm cube of oxygen at 35 degrees Celsius is 750 millimeter mercury. So this means that the volume V1 or the first volume is equal 100 cm cube. And the first pressure or pressure of oxygen is, you can say VO or V1. Pressure of oxygen is equal 750 millimeter mercury so now what will be the volume of the gas if pressure is reduced so now pressure has been reduced so this is first volume first pressure now the second pressure is 100 millimeter mercury so we are asked for the second volume which is v2 so that's what the question speaks about now if pressure times volume is constant this means that the first pressure times the first volume is equals constant. This also means that the second pressure times the second volume is equals constant. If both of them are constant, this means that constant is equal to constant. So this implies that P1V1 is equals P2V2. And we are looking for V2. We can simply make V2 subject formula. V2 is equals P1V1 over P2 and P1 is 750 millimeter mercury times uh, V1 is 100 cm cube. 100 cm cube over P2 is 100 millimeter mercury. So 100 millimeter mercury. From here, 100 can simply cancel 100. So the second volume is simply 750 cm cube. So this is in cm cube, this is in cm cube. They are both in the same unit, so there's no need for conversion. So that is simply option uh, D. D is 750 millimeter mercury. That's the answer to that question. But look at this question. It says, what is the mole molecular formula of a compound with empirical formula CH2O and vapor density of 90? 
The mass of hydrogen is 1, mass of carbon is 12, and oxygen is 16. We are given empirical formula with vapor density and asked to look for molecular formula. The first thing you do is look for the relative molecular mass. Relative molecular mass or numolar mass is equals 2 times vapor density. Now, vapor density is 90. This implies that the relative uh, molecular mass is equals 2 times 90, which is equals 180 gram per mole. This is the molar mass. Now, the relationship between empirical formula and molecular formula is this. Empirical formula times N is equals molar mass. And the empirical formula is CH2O times N is equals 180. Now, here we look for the mass of this compound. We are given that uh, the mass of carbon is 12. So, 12 plus the mass of oxygen is 1. But we have 2 molecules of oxygen. So, we multiply by 2. 1 times 2 plus 16 times n is equals 180. 12 plus 1 times 2 is 2 plus 2 is 14. Plus 16, that's 30. So 30 n or 30 times n is equals 180. n is equals 180 over 30, which is equals 6. So we've gotten n. n is a constant that we need to use to multiply this. Look at it. Uh, empirical formula times n is equals uh, mol uh, molar mass or molecular formula. So the molecular formula. Will simply be equals n is 2. So given C H2O times 6, n is 6. 6 times C is C, 6. 6 times H is H6, H12, plus 6 times O is O6. So this is the molecular formula. And this is simply glucose. The first one says, uh, which of the following metal exists as liquid at ordinary temperature? Another word for ordinary temperature is room temperature. So the only metal that is liquid at room temperature is mercury. While the only non metal that is liquid at room temperature is bromine. Take note of that. So this is the water of crystallization. To look for the percentage water of crystallization, we simply look for the mass of 7H2O over the total mass. The total mass is simply the mass of ZnSO4.7 H2O times 100. This is the formula. Now, the mass of uh, 7 H2O is simply 7 times hydrogen is 1, that is the mass of hydrogen, and the mass of oxygen is 16. So we have 2 hydrogen, which is 1 times 2 is 2. Then plus uh, oxygen is 16. 16 plus 2 is 18. So the mass of this guy is 7 times 18. How about the total mass? The total mass is simply zinc is 65 plus uh, the mass of sulfur is 32 as you can see you'll be given this so plus 32 plus oxygen is 16 here we have uh, four molecules of oxygen so which is uh, 16 times 4 plus 7 18 times 100 this is equals now this is here this is also here so we add we multiply this and we add everything here this will simply give you 7 18 all over um 
287 times 100. So solving that, we should be able to get uh, 44%. That is the percentage water of crystallization in that compound, which is option B. The last question says, uh, metals can be extracted from their ore by a process involving reduction. We extract metals from their ore using electrolytic reduction. So that is it on this set of questions. Let's see the next set of questions. Uh, the first question says, the color of methyl orange in alkaline medium is what? In alkaline medium, methyl orange is uh, yellow. Why the next one says, the permanent hardness of water can be removed by a dash. A boiling. Boiling can't remove permanent hardness. I discussed that in part one. Some of the things I'm not discussing in details now is possibly because I've already discussed them in details in part one of the chemistry videos. You may want to take a look at that uh, video. Addition of slick lime is also used to reduce hardness or to remove hardness from water when it is temporary hardness. So A and B are used to remove temporary hardness. Uh, C, filtration can't be used to remove hardness in water. Why addition of uh, caustic soda can be used to remove hardness from water? Uh, caustic soda or washing soda are used to remove permanent hardness. And the last question says, uh, a compound that gives orange-red color to a non-luminous flame is likely to contain uh, sodium ion, calcium ion, ion 2, and ion 3. The answer is A, is B rather. Calcium ion would give you a, an orange-red color to a non-luminous flame. So let me uh, give you some things, some tips to add to these questions. So let's see more indicators and also let's see flame test for more ions. Uh, look at this. Oh, these are indicators used. We have a methyl orange phenolphthalein and a litmus paper. In acidic medium, litmus paper becomes red. So when you are doing titration or acid-base reaction, if you use litmus to test and it changes the color to red, it means that that medium is acidic. While in alkaline medium, litmus paper is blue. Then phenolphthalein in acidic medium becomes colorless. Why in alkaline medium, it becomes pink or violet. A metal orange in acidic medium is purple or pink. Why in alkaline medium, it is uh, orange or yellow. Then a uh, calcium ion gives a brick red flame. Sodium ion gives yellow, or uh, yellow orange flame, flame. Why when you burn ion too, you get a bright blue or green flame. Then the gold flame when very hot. Ion theory will give you orange brown flame. So that is it on a flame test and indicators. Let's see the next set of questions. Now, isomers or isomerism is a phenomenon whereby more than one compound have the same formula, the same chemical formula, but different structure or different configuration. For example, if I give you the formula, let's say C3 pH. It's O. This can be something like this. 3 carbon, hydrogen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, OH. <coughs> this can be this. In this case, uh, this is proper one O. Uh, three carbon that's prop uh oh or the position of the hydrosy group is in carbon one so that's the reason for this one so this is an alkano uh, functional group oh hydrosy group we can still write this as one two three put the oh here Now, in this case, 
it still has the same number of hydrogen, which is 8. It has the same number of carbon and it has the same number of oxygen. But we've changed the structure. The, uh, the position of the hydrogen group is no longer in carbon 1, it's in carbon 2. So this becomes uh, propane 2 O. Oh. So they have the same uh, formula but different structure. So that is uh, isomerism. Now, they are telling us that uh, chlorobutane, how many isomers are possible? So let's see how many ways we can twist the configuration of chlorobutane. Now, but, butane is three, uh, four carbon. This uh, butane, chlorobutane means or, uh, chlorine attached to carbon one. We can choose to count from this carbon or from that carbon. If you are using this as carbon one, this is chlorine. So these are hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. So this is uh, chlorobutane itself. Now, this is carbon one, this is carbon two. If we are counting from here, this is one, two, three, four. If we are counting from here, this is one, two, three, four. Why name it organic compound? We start counting from the number that will give the functional group the least value. For example, if we are counting from here, this chain from here, this is carbon four. So this chlorine will be on the carbon four. It's giving it the largest number. So it's not recommended. We count from the one that will give it the least number. So counting from here, this is uh, chlorine. It's in carbon one. How about we bring this chlorine here to have something like this carbon. So chlorine becomes in this place. So we have H. Remember, carbon is tetravalent. This means that it has four electrons in the atomous shell. So hydrogen occupies, occupies, occupies. This carbon occupies here. So this is the complete bonding. So chlorine is not here, it's here. So this becomes two chlorobutane. You may be wondering, what if we put it here? Look at it. We start counting from here. One, two, three, four. This will be in carbon two. If we start counting from here, one, two, three, four, it will be in carbon three. But we need to uh, the numbering that will give the chlorine or the functional group the smallest number. So this is a tip on organ uh, naming of organic compounds. So this is two chlorobutane. If we put the carbon uh, chlorine here, it will still be two because we start counting from here. So what else can we do? <laughs> Look at this. This is a methyl group. So we can do something like this and say one, two, three, three carbon. Then we put chlorine here. Then we put the methyl group here, C, H, three. So here remains hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. The, uh, carbon is still complete, four. So this is carbon. H3 means three hydrogen. So given this, this is carbon two. We now have a uh, two methyl because the methyl group is in carbon two, then chlorine is in carbon two. Two methyl, two, two chloro, propane, two methyl, two chloro, propane. So this is four. So we can't do any other thing. We can't bring it here. It will be the same as this in carbon one. So these are the four isomers of uh, chlorobutane. It has four isomers. So we have two chromium plus we have seven oxygen, which is equals the it, let it be equal to the total oxidation number that is minus two. Minus two. Now we have two CRO plus the oxidation number of oxygen is minus two. So you must take note of that. Oxygen is a bit as oxidation number of minus two. So this is equals uh, minus two, which is the total oxidation number. <laughs> Given this, two chromium minus 14 is equals minus two. 
2 chromium is equals minus 2 plus 14. 2 chromium is equals uh, 12. So chromium is equals 12 over 2, which is equals 6. So the addition number of chromium is 6 in this compound. So it changed from 6 to plus 3. So oxidation number of chromium changed from this to that. Uh, this question says 15 cm cube of gaseous hydrocarbon is required for the complete combustion of 75 cm cube of oxygen. So that means uh, the volume of volume of hydrocarbon, 15 cm cube. Volume of oxygen is uh, 75 cm cube, and it needed uh, 45 cm cube of carbon dioxide. So volume of CO2 is equals 45 cm cube. Calculate the molecular formula of the hydrocarbon. So from the question, we are told that uh, volume of hydrogen is 15 cm cube. As you can see, uh, hydrocarbon HC. 15 cm cube, and he said that it's required for the complete combustion of 75 cm cube of oxygen. That's volume of oxygen is 75 cm cube, and it's needed 45 cm cube of carbon 4 oxide. Now, to calculate the molecular formula, we need to first of all look at the general formula for combustion of hydrocarbons and how to derive the variables. The combustion of hydrocarbons follows this uh, formula, uh, C, S, H, Y. Now, to calculate this, we need to know the value of S and the value of Y. S is simply uh, the volume of carbon for us that produced over the volume of hydrocarbons. This is simply, the volume of carbon for us that produced is simply VCO2, which is 45 cm cubed over the volume of hydrocarbons is 15. This is simply give you uh, this will give you uh, 3 cm cube. Why uh, S plus Y over 4 is simply gotten by saying uh, the volume of oxygen used which is uh, 75 cm cube over the volume of hydrocarbon used which is 15 cm cube this will give you 5 cm cube so s plus y over 4 is equals 5 cm cube but s is equals 3 so this means uh, 3 plus y over 4 is equals 5 y over 4 is equals 5 minus 3 which is equals 2 y over 4 is equals 2 therefore y is equals 2 times 4 which is equals 8 so we've been able to get the value of s s is equals 3 and y is equals 8 putting the value here we simply have uh, c 3 h 8 if we have to continue uh, the equation we simply have plus uh, 3 plus y over 3 plus 8 over 4 O2 3CO2 plus 8H2O. So that is the formula. But this is the volume of hydrocarbon required, which we are asked to calculate. So that's uh, C3H8. So the correct option is C. Loss of water of crystallization in salts is referred to as efflorescence. Efflorescence. Salts with water of crystallization, when exposed to atmosphere, they tend to lose this water of crystallization. That process is referred to as efflorescence. Other properties of salt is deliquescence. Deliquescence and hygroscopy. Uh, hygroscopy is uh, a phenomenon in salt in which the salt absorbs water from the atmosphere. It absorbs water of crystallization. However, it doesn't dissolve, so it doesn't turn into solution. On the contrary, 
Deliquescent salts are salts that absorb water of crystallization from the atmosphere until they become uh, aqueous solution, until they are dissolved in the water. So those are the three characteristics of salt we should look at. And the next one says, methane, ethane, propane, and butane are the first or are the five simplest. They are the five simplest arcanes. Look at it. This ends with A N E A N E A N E. So they are arcanes. If they ended with uh, E N E, let's say E N E E N E, they will be called it arcanes. Why the one that ends with Y N E Y N E Y N E will be called arcanes. So those are the first five simplest. Why the one with five is pentane and so on, hexane, blah blah blah. Now, look at that. It says the empirical formula of oxide of nitrogen. Oxide of nitrogen means the compound has nitrogen and oxygen. Now, if it has a uh, nitrogen and oxygen, they told us that the Percentage of nitrogen is 30.4%. Uh, this is the percentage of nitrogen. And since it's just nitrogen and oxygen present, it is safe for us to say that the percentage of oxygen is simply 100%, 100 minus 30.4. If nitrogen is 30.4%, it means that oxygen is 69.6%. And to calculate the empirical formula, the first thing we do is divide both by their molar mass. The molar mass of nitrogen is 14 and the molar mass of oxygen is 16. So dividing this by 14, we get 2.17. And dividing 69.6 uh, by 16, we get 4.35. After this step, the next thing you do is divide, divide by the smallest number. So this is the smallest number between these two. So dividing by 2.17, we divide it by 2.17. So since this one is dividing itself, so this is obviously 1. Divided this by this, we get uh, 2. So this is how you calculate empirical formula. If there is another one, let's say uh, P or anything, any compound C, so its own percentage will be here, this percentage will be here. You divide by each of their masses. Then you divide by the smallest number after dividing by their masses. So you get this ratio. So the ratio here is simply N1O2 or NO2. So that is the empirical formula. Uh, let's look at uh, these two last guys. Uh, this is a uh, enlistic reaction, and this is a uh, uh, reaction of ethyl ethanoid with ammonia. So let's look at this ammonolysis and uh, Hervouhazenlistic reaction. Let me uh, bring out the reactions here for me to explain it uh, easier. So the product of the reaction between uh, Ammonia and ester is simply uh, called ammonolysis when ammonia reacts with esters. So in this case, ethyl ethanoate reacts with ammonia. The product will simply be ethanamide and ethanol. So we get an amide and ethanol when esters react with ammonia. And the process is referred to as ammonolysis. Meanwhile, uh, he said the product of photochlorination of ethanoic acid are photochlorination of ethanoic acid simply means a reaction of uh, ethanoic acid in the process of light. And so ethanoic acid reacting with chlorine. So chlorine, chlorine plus ethanoic acid in the presence of ultra ultraviolet light will simply give us uh, this guy. And HCl. So this is simply uh, C, C, hydrogen and hydrogen and hydrogen. H3, this is O, this is O, H plus chlorine. Simply give you uh, C, C, O, O, H. And we have hydrogen here, we have chlorine, we have here. So look at what happened. This hydrogen here is replaced by chlorine plus the second uh, this hydrogen here is replaced by this chlorine and another the hydrogen that is replaced by chlorine reacts with the second chlorine to form 
HCl. So this is two chlorine. The first chlorine displaces this hydrogen here to form the chlorine at the top, while the remaining chlorine reacts with the hydrogen displaced. This is referred to as hair vohazelistic reaction. This brings us to the end of Unibel Positiemi Chemistry Questions and Answers Part 2. So, hope you enjoyed the part 1 and part 2. So, let me know how you feel about this video series, even as we wait for part 3. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to check out my other amazing videos.